In the morning, um, you see the sunlight, that clock is entrained and it starts a cascade of hormone release throughout the day, which keeps you really optimal, keeps you in good shape, keeps you feeling sort of mentally well as, as well. You're gonna sort of start off by feeling maybe a little bit groggy in the mornings, maybe you'll be more of an evening person, you'll start to slump during the day and just not feel great. And over time, that will lead to you know, that sort of leptin insulin resistance that, that we were talking about sort of around that, that brain area. And then you're gonna develop things like an Alzheimer's, like a dementia. A lot of people think, oh, it's just, just to manage sleep, but it's actually, it goes a little bit more deeper than that. And it goes into metabolism, it goes into insulin resistance. And, you know, you've got to think about light as, as the key sort of master governor of, of hormones as well. Body, mind, empowerment. Get stronger, faster, smarter, quicker, friendlier, more helpful, more driven. Everything the body needs. Control your mind. Welcome to the Body Mind Empowerment Podcast. I'm your host, Seamland, and our guest today is Andy Munt from Australia. Andy is an entrepreneur and the founder of Blue Blocks. Blue Blocks is a brand of blue blocking glasses that seeks to combat the negative effects of blue light on your health and well being. Andy, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on, Sim. Yeah, it's uh, nice to see you. And uh, I see that you're wearing, uh, you're not wearing like the specific blue blocking glasses, but I, I can expect that they are still, uh, they're filtering out some of the blue blue wavelengths. So uh, what time What time is it there from Australia at the moment? Yeah, so, um, so we're just, just after 5 p.m. in, in the evening. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's really bright outside still. I'm sat right next to a window, um, sun shining in, as you can probably see, the light's great. So... I've just got on some um, some Blue Blocks computer glasses. Um, so there's no artificial light sort of on around me apart from my computer screen. Um, so all I need is uh, just to filter out a little bit of the, the nasty blue spike. Um, but I, I can explain a little bit more later on as well about the different types of glasses. But um, yeah, these are, these are specifically computer glasses, specifically focus on the light that's, that's coming straight out of this screen at me um, and filtering it out. So. Uh, yeah, it's all, all very all very positive stuff. And um, yeah, if, if, if I was sat in, for instance, if I was sat in a room where I had LED light shining down on me, it was um, starting to get a little bit dark outside or, or maybe it was a cloudy day, then I would, uh, I would wear a pair of, of these, which are, which are yellow glasses. Mm. They just filter out a lot more of the, um, a lot more of the, the blue, um, but they also make things a lot brighter. Um, in terms of uh, all the other colors that, that are coming through. So actually makes, uh, makes your day a lot brighter. And then if it was uh, completely dark, so post sunset outside, I would wear blue blocking glasses as opposed to blue filtering glasses, which are these ones here with the, with the red lens, because um, we don't want any blue or green light after dark. So uh, that's the reason why I've got these on right now. Yeah, yeah, it's, it is indeed like, we would talk about the differences later on, but yeah, first of all, maybe we can just start off with like, what are the negative side effects of blue light exposure? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it really depends on context in. So it really depends on what time of the day um, you're, you're talking about when it comes to blue light and, and any kind of um, color of light, um, whether it be visible or, or invisible. So let me talk about the positives of blue light first. So um, when you wake up in the morning, um, your, your first sort of um, light that you should be seeing is, is a sunrise. Now, the reason being is um, during the sunrise, you get a sort of very well balanced spectrum of colors, but you also get um, specific frequencies of blue light in there as well. And what that does in the morning is it raises your cortisol levels um, initially, which helps you sort of feel awake and alert. Um, a lot of people put cortisol down to um, down to stress, anxiety, and depression. I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but in the context of light, the first light that you see when it's a sunrise will spike that cortisol and only have positive effects of making you feel alert and awake. Another positive of blue in the morning as well is um, it actually starts, um, and this we're talking about natural blue light here, not artificial. It starts the sequence of producing a neurotransmitter called um, serotonin, and serotonin um, is produced when you're in natural sunlight in the morning during the day and is later after dark in the absence of blue and green light turned into melatonin, which is a powerful antioxidant and is better known as a sleep hormone that, that basically helps you get a good quality, um, long duration sleep. Um, so they're, they're the positive 
um, sort of effects of blue during the day. I mean, you don't really want to be blocking all blue light during the day, otherwise you're going to really have um, a lot of negative effects um, endocrinologically speaking. So your hormones are going to be really unbalanced. So what happens during the day is the, let's just talk about the earth. So the earth goes through a 24 hour period where um, during say 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., um, roughly speaking, depends on the season, you go through a light period. And then 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., um, you go for a dark period. Now, as humans have evolved, that cycle has then been um, incorporated within our, within our bodies as a, basically a body clock, it's called a circadian rhythm, a circadian clock, a master clock. Um, and that clock is run um, and, and governed and entrained by light and dark cycles. So in the morning, um, you see the sunlight, that clock is entrained and the starts a cascade of hormone release throughout the day, which keeps you really optimal, um, keeps you in good shape, keeps you feeling sort of mentally sort of well as, as well. But when you hit the sort of, if you think ancestrally speaking, when you hit sunset after that period, you wouldn't have much light at all. And the light that you would have would be say a campfire. Um, and then as we evolved through time and we started to move into houses, we would have say kerosene lamps or candles. Um, and the only sort of color light that that gives off is sort of blue, oranges, ambers, um, which doesn't have an effect on, um, on your hormones um, in a negative way. But what we've done as we've evolved, um, culturally and, and technologically, we've, we've evolved so much quicker than our evolution. So now that after dark, we're switching on LED lights, we can be talking on, on say Skype or Zoom or something like that. We could be playing on our smartphones, we could be um, on an iPad, we could be watching TV. We could even be outside the house after dark with, um, in a shopping mall, in a supermarket, or even driving when there's lights everywhere. Now, what that does is, that um, does, does a whole sort of mirage of, of negative effects on our body. So the first one it would do is it would actually suppress um, the release of melatonin. So it wouldn't allow all that amazing serotonin that you build up during the day to be trans, um, translated into melatonin and make you sort of fall asleep very well. I mean, a lot of people that are exposed to blue light can still fall asleep, but their quality of sleep is it's negatively impacted mm. as well. And there's a lot of studies that show that. Um, and also, if, if melatonin is not being um, released optimally after dark, you're actually foregoing one of the world's most powerful antioxidants. So if you're having, you know, sort of bad cell um, replication and, um, you know, poor mitochondrial function or things like that, the melatonin then can't go in and, and clear up all the mess that's sort of been happening during the day. Um, another negative effects as well is there's been quite a few, quite a few studies that have come out and I, I wrote a blog on it rec recently um, with, a, with the title, Is Light the Cause of, of Insulin Resistance? Mm -hmm. um, and there's, there's quite a few studies out there that show that if we're exposed to blue light after dark or whilst we're even sleeping, um, the tests on blood sugar levels um, and, and insulin resistance um, when, when conducted under sort of laboratory conditions um, actually show that people become more insulin resistant um, when they're exposed to, to artificial blue and light, uh, blue and green light after dark. So, you know, you've, a lot of people think, oh, it's just, just to manage sleep, but it's actually, it goes a little bit more deeper than that. And it goes into, you know, metabolism, it goes into insulin resistance. And, you know, you've got to think about light as, as the key sort of master governor of, of hormones as well. Yeah, for sure. You gave like a really good overview about this entire thing and uh, including the circadian rhythms and uh, things like that. And yeah, I, I do want to add that, yeah, there are a lot of studies showing that weight loss and or, you know, weight gain and uh, depression and Alzheimer's, those things, they are connected to uh, blue light exposure at night. And uh, part of it has to do with how, how the blue light kind of stimulates the body to produce some insulin and uh, produce more cortisol. And uh, that's, that's one of the mechanisms that can, pr that can promote like the insulin resistance. And uh, of course, like if you don't produce melatonin during sleep, then your brain won't be able to heal itself. And uh, it's not gonna, it's not gonna clear out the, all the plaques and uh, all the other waste material that accumulates during, during the day. So yeah, incredibly, incredibly vital for people to, 
uh, not not expose themselves to their blue light from their smartphones or their laptop screens at night and yeah it's pro- one of those things that unless you have tried to kind of block it out then you won't even think that it's that, that big of an issue but uh, after you kind of put some you know put some uh, filters on or put some glasses on then you will definitely notice that there is indeed some, something there and uh, it will probably improve a whole lot of your sleep and you know everything else as well during the day you will probably be more alert and uh, once you kind of establish a more consistent circadian rhythm as well then uh, your daily energy levels will also become more stable and uh, less that you will experience less fatigue yeah that's that's absolutely right and um there's a couple of good points you've you've made there and, and the first one is um you know the alzheimer's sort of link as well and you know a lot of people refer to it as type 3 diabetes now and and you know sort of being some you know sort of leptin and insulin resistant um sort of throughout the brain and you know one of the things that sort of drew me into into that discussion was that um there's two types of um ways that a human being can fall asleep so you've got one that we've just spoken about which is the circadian rhythm where you know it becomes dark melatonin secreted um and you just build up that sort of um you know you just fall into a sleep and and away you go but there's also another way you can fall asleep as well which is like the need to sleep so we refer to this as sleep pressure so throughout the day we're doing um, a lot of metabolic processes and you know being really into sort of um, the um, nutrition and and health side of things like you are sim you'll understand that and, and a lot of your um, viewers will understand that you know um, ATP is is required for um, to run those metabolic processes to you know whether it be your, your heart beating whether it be exercise whether it be eating food or, or whatever but the byproduct of um, you know adenosine triphosphate is something called adenosine and every time a metabolic process is run um, it builds up and up and up in your brain um, and then what happens is the mo- just think of it more and more and more weight being put on your head. Um, and then it gets to a point during the day where you've done so many metabolic processes that your body has to fall asleep in order to start clearing out all those plaques and, and adenosine buildup in, in your brain. And it's one of the theories of why we sleep. Um, and if we, um, and if we don't, and if we resist that urge to sleep or we are exposed to blue light after dark and mess up our circadian rhythms, we're not getting the deep um, REM sleep we need to actually start clearing out those plaques and start clearing out those um, that build up of adenosine. So you're going to sort of start off by feeling maybe a little bit groggy in the mornings. Maybe you'll be more of an evening person. Mm. Um, you'll start to slump during the day um, and just not feel great. And over time, that will lead to you know that sort of leptin insulin resistance that that we were talking about, sort of around that that brain area. Um, and then you're going to develop things like an Alzheimer's, like a dementia, um, you know, even if it gets to things like, you know, a lot of people um, get to a certain age and start forgetting things and mm. might not leave dementia, but, you know, they have to start writing things down because the brain is no longer optimal. Um, so, yeah, so I, I just sort of wanted to make that point that, um, you know, there are two types of sleep and, you know, both as, are as important as, as, as each other in making sure that, you know, neurologically speaking, um, your brain is getting that, um, you know, that, that spring clean it needs every night. Mm. Yeah, like most people, they take their sleep so, so much for granted and uh, they don't even care about it. Like, oh, it doesn't matter if I got a poor night's sleep or if it doesn't matter if I'm uh, not having like uh, proper sleep, quality sleep, I still feel tired in the morning. It doesn't matter, you know, I'm simply going to push through or either I'm going to, you know, compensate for that with coffee or energy drinks or something like that and uh, yeah it's it's it, it will have like a huge negative infa- impact on your overall health and longevity in the long term and uh, mm-hmm. the symptoms of alzheimer's they don't you know happen overnight you know they don't, they're gonna you, you get alzheimer's you know over the course of decades you know you may have the first initial symptoms of you know brain fog or fatigue already even today and uh, you 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 you're, you're like you know it, it can be like a good indicator that you're not doing things right and there is something that you're missing out on in terms of sleep quality and blue light maybe like one of those things that uh, will definitely have like uh, some sort of an effect absolutely and, and you know you touched another good point there with coffee um coffee is is widely renowned for its great antioxidant um effects um 
but the, the negative side to caffeine um, and, you know, specifically the caffeine in, in, in coffee, as, as, as we put it into this context, is it's a, you know, really, really strong suppressant of adenosine. Mm. So, you know, it's, yeah. it's blocking adenosine receptors. So you're building up fatigue during the day um, for all your metabolic processes. You're drinking caffeine and getting that hit, and then you're suddenly feeling alert and awake again. And that's because it's blocking your adenosine receptors. So, you know, people always, whenever I make the point, I mean, I'm, I haven't drunk caffeine or taken caffeine for about two years now. I, I, you know, it's the best thing I've ever done. But a lot of people swear by it. And a lot of people like to, like to drink coffee. And they always argue, oh, it's the antioxidant effects and, and all this good stuff. But, you know, there's, there's two tips I can give for that. Ditch the coffee. Literally, it's horrible for about three days if you ditch in the, the, the caffeine-infused uh, coffee but you'll feel amazing. And if you think you get good antioxidants in, in coffee, we just spoke about melatonin. It is the most powerful antioxidant you can have. Like, why would you want to forego that for some other antioxidants that you've got in, in, in a coffee? Yeah. Um, and the second, um, second thing you can do as well is, um, I drink a, um, a Swiss water extracted coffee. So that is um, a method that they use. I don't know the specifics of the method, but I know that it's only using natural products, obviously Swiss water. Um, whereas a lot of decaffeinated coffee that you'll buy, say, um, from your local supermarket will be extracted using things like, um, I can't remember whether it was arsenic or cyanide, one of the really bad chemicals and a few other bad things in there as well. So you're better off you know, avoiding that. So you know, that'd be my sort of two rebuttals to anyone that says, oh, I like caffeine and, and all, all that good stuff but if you are one of those people that need caffeine it's an again it's one of these inhibitors of, of something that's going to affect sleep have it in in the morning have it in you know if you want to watch the sunrise um with a coffee be my guest i don't think you need to um but you know if you feel like you're one of those people that needs caffeine take it as early in the morning as you can and then don't drink anymore hmm. yeah like uh there are some studies showing that it uh, coffee protects against Alzheimer's and cognitive decline. But if if you drink the coffee and you're not sleeping properly, then it's not going to work in a sense. Like uh, sleep is sense. sleep is <laughs> a lot more important than uh, the antioxidants or polyphenols from the coffee. That's it. I'm getting a hundred cups of coffee starting now. Let's now talk about like the blue blockers. Uh, how can the blue blockers then protect the person against the circadian mismatches in the evening? Yeah, let's talk about those. Let me take, let me just put them on just so normally I wouldn't wear these with the sun out, but I'll wear them for a little bit just so people can see, see them. Um, you know, you have a pair of, um, similar to these as, yeah. as well, the Onyx, yeah, which so. are really good. Yeah. One of our most popular ones though. So yeah. So as you can see guys, right, this is, this is why I'll explain why we need to wear them. So we've gone into a little bit of detail as to, um, serotonin is built up during the day um, and then we want to now get that serotonin into melatonin because melatonin is a hormone that induces sleep now the only way to do that is in physiological darkness now there was a study by Phelps in 2001 um, really good um, uh, academic that basically does a lot of um, studies on sleep and he coined that term physiological darkness you can call it biological darkness it basically means in the absence of blue and green light below 550 nanometers. Now, nanometers is what light's measured in. Um, blue runs from 400 nanometers to 495 nanometers, and green runs from 495 to 570 nanometers. Now, the studies that, because um, when, we, when we produced blue blocks, blue blocker glasses, we read every single paper there was on um, blue and green light um, exposure after dark. And it was very clear in the literature that um, it was light below 550 nanometers that was actually, and, and sort of upwards from 400, so between 4 and 550 nanometers, which was having the greatest impact on melatonin being secreted um, from the pineal gland after dark. So that's why we created these glasses, because a couple of years ago when I was trying to block blue light, I was wearing glasses that were amber sort of orange tinted so a bit like your uvex your swannies those types of glasses um and we did some tests on them and we found that they were they were only actually blocking blue light um, and when you actually start reading the the academic literature there's a whole sort of 50 percent more light um right up to the 550 um, nanometer spectrum 
um, that was actually suppressing melatonin as well. So we developed this Sleep Plus red tint, um, and the red actually um, takes out 100% of, of um, the green up to 550. Um, a little bit of green is okay, so we left everything post 550 in. Um, so really all you're seeing is um, sort of reds, oranges, ambers. And we mentioned earlier that our ancestors would have only seen these types of colors after dark because they would have had a campfire, they would have had candles, incandescent type lightings even into the 1800s. Um, so we're creating a sense of what our ancestors would see after dark. And when you put these on after the sunset's gone down, after artificial lights starting to be switched on, um, you actually start to feel sleepy within a couple of hours um, and it sends you off into a really deep sleep. You get some really great dreams and you just start to wake up feeling really refreshed as well because you've had such a good sleep. Um, so the, basically the, the gateway to your um, master clock. So your master clock is, is located sort of directly through the middle of your head. It's in the super charismatic nucleus um, and it basically takes light through um, photoreceptors in the eye, which are called melanopsin. Um, and it takes that light and it then translates into, oh, I've, I see this spectrum of light, it must be daytime. I see this spectrum of light, it must be nighttime. Um, so if you're, if you're not wearing these glasses and you're exposed to blue light in the evenings, your brain is going to um, translate that light as being, oh, it's still daytime. I can keep cortisol levels high. Um, for instance. So this is what I wanted to touch on as well, that if you, these types of glasses reduce down the cortisol after dark, that the blue light is actually having, on, uh, having an effect on. Mm. And the cortisol is good during the day because it keeps you alert and keeps you feeling awake. Two things you don't want to be doing after dark. You want to be winding down for bed. And we all know that when you actually have too much of one hormone, it can lead to a lot of, um, a lot of diseases. So what happens when cortisol is... is constantly high which is being done by our blue lit world 24 7 is that you start getting stressed what does stress lead to anxiety or depression what do those things lead to long term it could even lead in the worst case to suicide we're seeing suicide rates increase quite a lot um you know not saying that's the, the sort of flat out cause of it but you know it's food for thought that's that's a um that's for sure now we just mentioned melanopsin, okay? So melanopsin is really important. It's in the eyes, okay? We, we knew it was in the eyes, you know, 10, 15 years ago, and we knew that we needed to wear blue, blue light glasses to make sure that, um, you know, we, we block out that blue and green light and we don't let the, um, the blue light interfere with our circadian rhythms. Now, a few years ago, there was actually some studies that have come out um, that actually found that melanopsin was also present in the brain. Um, and then last year it came out and found that melanopsin is present in your skin and also in the fat cells in your body. So what does that mean? Now that means that after dark, if you're wearing blue light glasses, brilliant, because obviously um, blue light goes through the, through the eyes and, and tells your brain all, all, all sorts of wrong things. So you need to block it through the eyes, but you also need to block it through the skin. So when the sun goes down, I'll be putting on um, a hoodie um, get the air con on because it's so hot here in Australia, but I'll cover up the skin on my arms, my legs, I'll have my hood up so it's not actually affecting um, any of the melanopsin in my, um, in my head. Um, so you've got to think, of, you've got to be mindful and think of that as well, you know, it's, it all starts with the glasses, but there's little hacks you need to do as well in order to make your environment um, uh, positive um, as well in terms of light. So yes, I wear those um, I cover up my skin at night, specifically when I'm watching television. Because, I, you know, I'm, I live in the modern world. Like A lot of biohackers come to me and say, oh, I just switch the TV off. I, I do this, I do that. doesn't interest me. I want to watch my favorite TV shows. I follow soccer. I want to watch a lot of that. So it's going to happen. So I just need to make hacks in my environment, like wearing the long, long sleeve clothes to be on the glasses to be able to watch it. But what I also do is I've taken out all the um, standard LED lights in my house and actually fitted in red incandescent and halogen lights. So when I want light after dark, instead of having to light candles all the time, candles are good sometimes, not a problem, um, I can just switch on a light um, and I've got red light. I've got a nice warm red orange glow in, in my living room, in my bedroom, um, and everywhere else I go. Um, there's only one room that has uh, sort of white, blue LED light, and that is our 
we have a room where my wife gets ready in the morning. Um, and so she doesn't look like a clown when she's putting on her makeup in the morning. She does put on some a <laughs> little bit of LED light um, it, when it's dark in, in the winter to be able to put her makeup on. So we'll let her off on that one. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's just little hacks and things like that, Sim, that people need to do, you know, just changing out the lights, um, making sure your skin's covered up, um, and, and also wearing these, these blue blockers after dark and making sure they are red um, and they are a company you know, if, if you don't choose blue blocks, not an issue, but make sure that company tells you the science behind how they've created those glasses. And they're not just an amber lens glass that you're buying off Amazon because yeah. it just, it's, it's a waste of time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like uh, I, I want to briefly mention that, uh, yeah, that the melatonin suppression can happen through, through the skin as well. And I remember, remember the studies where people have been shot like this blue light on their elbows or something and it, they yes. saw that it suppressed melatonin a little bit and uh, it's quite quite fascinating in the sense that yeah your entire body is detecting the light around you and it makes perfect evolutionary sense and a perfect physiological sense as well when, whenever you are outside then your body will want to keep itself in sync with the circadian rhythms and to kind of detect okay what time of the day is and what sort of what sort of metabolic processes do we need to do or do we need to rest or do we need to become more alert and uh, more and more active yeah and we should have thought about we should have definitely thought about this years ago because yeah. there was a study about 20 years ago that showed that blind people still had circadian rhythms and were still affected by light um and i read that i've read this study so many times it's it's not even funny and it never even crossed my mind like i, I was just thinking oh but it must have just sort of their eyes were open so the light went through or, or whatever but um yeah didn't even think didn't even cross my mind to think, well, what else is at play here? Why isn't this? Because the skin can sense, you know, temperature change. And, um, you know, we get sort of goosebumps if it gets a little bit cold and we can feel heat. And so why, why, why didn't we think it was light? Yeah, it sort of annoyed me that I didn't think of this before and had to wait for a study to, to come out. But, you know, like Jack Cruz has been saying it for years. So, you know, he's obviously a lot more switched on than myself when it comes to this kind of thing. But um, it was great to it was great to finally see that and, and we just now need to take steps to, to preserve our, um, our, our skin as well as our, um, as well as our eyes. Um, and you know, another thing I wanted to, to mention as well, um, just from a food and exercise point of view, um, everything runs on a circadian rhythm. So, you know, but there's been a lot of um, good blogs by Bill Lagacos um, over the years where he's looked at sort of circadian entrainment. Um, and by that, we mean um, what we covered earlier, where you get up and you get your, you, you take as much clothes off as you can. You get your eyes looking towards the sunrise and your body clock is then entrained um, and the correct hormonal processes can then um, cascade throughout the day. And that's brilliant. That entrains your master clock. But there are lots, every cell in our body, every organ in our body, our skin, um, our skeletal muscle all contains its own peripheral oscillators. So little, little clocks as well that are all entrained um, and run in sync with the master clock. So it makes complete sense. When you actually look at the literature as well, this, this all makes complete sense that your biggest meal should be in the morning during sunrise. Now we know that, <clears throat> excuse me, we know that melanopsin is in the fat cells as well. And again, there was a study last year that came out in December 2017, so almost a year ago now, um, that actually showed that if you eat um, under um, natural sun- sunlight in the AM, it reduces lipid particle size, like the lipid droplet size, and also increases leptin. So two things that you really want. You want to be eating in the morning. You're going to you know, reduce the fat particle size in your adipose tissue. And you're also going to feel fuller um, quicker as well. Um, Leptin's going to be higher. So a lot of people do intermittent fasting all wrong. They, they, they sort of wait, don't have any breakfast and then have it before they go to bed. You're digesting that food, your body, um, you know, we've, we've already touched on that blue, eating under artificial blue light makes you insulin resistant. Yeah. So you shouldn't be having that biggest meal at the end of the day. You should be having it at the start of the day. And when you have that meal at the start of the day, Number one, you've looked at the sun, your master clock's entrained. Number two, all your organ clocks are now entrained because you've eaten at the, at the start of your day. And just to top it off, exercise in the morning as well, and you're entrained along with your master clock, your skeletal muscle clocks as well. So if you're exercising, eating your biggest meal in the day, and um, watching the sunrise, do those three things. You've entrained your whole clock before you've even started your actual working day. 
Mm. Yeah, it's so true. And uh, that uh, it's, you know, eating at night and those things, they're quite bad for not only your digestion, but the circadian clock as well and your sleep quality. Like if, um, you know, eating before bedtime is, go- is going to definitely uh, lower the amount of deep sleep you may be getting. And it's probably a good idea to finish off eating uh, at least like a few hours before bedtime uh, at, at the least. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, you, you look at... Um, put it into sort of a, a training and um, sort of elite athlete type um, scenario. What do bodybuilders do before bed? They eat a lot of food. Why? Because they want to gain, gain weight. Yeah. Um, and yes, they're, they're working out very intensely. They're probably taking anabolic steroids as well, maybe. But, you know, they want to do that because they want to grow. They want to get bigger and, and stronger. Um, but, you know, the average, average person that wants to lose weight, you, you, you don't want to you don't want to be eating before bed because that's counterproductive to what you're trying to achieve. So yeah, yeah, you can still do your intermittent fasting. Cause people say this to me, they're like, Oh, but what about IF? What about IF? And it's brilliant. Intermittent fasting is great for two things, calorie restriction and autophagy. Um, but you don't need to be doing that at the beginning of, um, of your day. Just start fasting from, I don't know, two, three o'clock or maybe just from sun, um, sunset onwards and, and go from there. And then you're going to have the benefits of, of IF along with the benefits of a really well-entrained and healthy circadian rhythm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you mentioned, autophagy, and that's another one of those things that uh, you ain't actually going to benefit from unless you're getting quality sleep, because most of the clearance process of autophagy, it actually takes place in during sleep and uh, with with in conjunction with m- melatonin and such so yeah even if even if you are doing fasting but you're not sleeping properly then you're not even going to gain the benefits of fasting fully so <laughs> sleep is probably yeah. the most important thing ever <laughs> absolutely yeah sleep honestly sleep is the it's single-handedly the most important thing yeah. you know it's like you know, with the apoptosis and your, and your autophagy, you know, if, if you, that happens, like you said, predominantly when you're sleeping. Um, and if you're not sleeping well and you're not clearing out um, dead cells, you're not repairing um, faulty cells, you, you know, that's going to lead to all sorts of problems, you know, most notably cancer. Um, you know, that's on the rise at the moment. Um, and, you know, if, if you're not being able to sleep properly to clear out the dead cells and turn over cells properly, um, you know, you're going to increase your risk of... Um, of diseases such as cancer and and even sort of alzheimer's that we touched on dementia earlier if you're not turning over those cells um through um, through good quality sleep then you're going to have problems and you know we you mentioned a really good point earlier that um you know people don't know that 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 they're having a good sleep or a bad sleep because they don't know any different before i i mean i was three or four years ago i'm actually probably four or five years ago now i was really overweight 30 or 40 pounds heavier than i was now and I turned to um, a ketogenic diet to be able to get myself in, in shape um, and started to sort of um, build some good friendships with people like Marty Kendall, Luis Villasenor, and people like that back in the day when they were just starting up um, optimizing nutrition, um, keto gains, those types of um, companies. And, you know, we made points then that people don't know how bad they actually feel until you actually change, make positive changes in your life. And that was one of the things that, the first sort of um, stepping stone into founding Blue Blocks, little did I know it at the time, was was actually looking critically at, okay, right, I'm going to change my diet. I'm going to do it based on these reasons, based on science, and I'm going to see how I feel. And when you actually go to the healthy side, um, whether it be whatever it may be, you know, it could be vegan, carnivore, keto, whatever um, the diet is um, that the, the person thinks is healthy. Typically, the removal of, of processed crap um, is, is the best thing um, of any diet. But um, you actually find that when you go back, say, you know, if I go on holiday and, and I'm out sort of with family that I haven't seen for years and we're having like a big meal and I'm like there, I have a little bit of bread or, you know, have something that isn't on my normal plan. I feel terrible the next day. I feel sick, feel really, really bad. Um, and the same is true for blue light. If you, if you don't know any different, then you're not going to know how good your sleep can be until you've tried these glasses. Um, and honestly, it's like every single person that tries, tries these glasses, a lot of people know they've, they've used them and they're upgrading to a more optimal product. But some of our customers have never used these before. And our customer service team constantly, um, every day, are dealing with people that haven't actually used these before. And we are that confident that these are the best. And after one night, you will not 
not not want to wear these. Mm. Um, sorry for the double negative. Um, but we'll, we'll give your money back if um, if you don't have a good night's sleep after one use of these. Honestly, it's a different level. So, you know, we're happy to put our money where our mouth is on on the science behind these um, as well. And and one thing I wanted to speak about, which has come up, it comes up a lot. Okay is peripheral light. Um, so a lot of people think that, um, you know, you've got some gaps in between your glasses here. I'm just going to take these off now because I'm probably, probably full asleep in, in a bit. Um, so you've got sort of um, gaps in between the glasses and a lot of people like True Dark, for instance, um, Dave Asprey's company, have a wraparound pair of glasses. Mm-hmm. It's not what we're about. We're about fashion style. We want people to wear these when they go outside the house because that's where light's a problem. You know, we're not all going to go out with swimming goggles on. Mm-hmm. Now, there was a really good quote um, that um, a doctor actually said to myself, and I posted it in our light and health group. Um, I'm going to read it out to you guys um, because it, I think it explains why peripheral light is not an issue. So basically, you've got IPRGC cells within your eyes, okay? Now, that's an intrinsically photosensitive, photosensitive retinal ganglion cell, okay? They're located 